G'day champions, how the hell are ya? I'm alright, thanks for asking, a little hungry. Could use another coffee, but what can you do? So here we've got a JCM 800 base series head, 100 water. We're gonna go over the thing, see what it requires. It's pretty bashed up. We're gonna also have a look at the differences in the circuit between the base head and the, for example, 2203. Uh, it's Guitar Brethren. So stick with us and we'll have a bit of a laugh as well as usual. All right, well, I've got a cup of tea. It'll have to suffice. Um, I'm gonna have to start a GoFundMe to get a coffee machine for the shop, I think. Espresso or death. So we'll start with the front panel. First thing I noticed looking at the front was that it looks like someone has glued the input jacks. Joy. So you can see there what looks like possibly liquid nails or maybe shoe goo or something. Shouldn't be too hard to undo, but hopefully it's not on the thread as well because that could get messy. Uh, the knobs actually appear to be in pretty good nick. They're all intact. All the caps are still present. The caps on the the tops of the knobs seem to go missing off the like the valve state series, all the solid state stuff, the MGs. Uh, cockroach poop coming out of the amp. Oh, that's nice. Um, but the the real deals, or at, at least the earlier ones, uh, seem to hold onto their caps okay. So I don't know if they changed glue or manufacturers or what. I, I don't think Marshall makes these in house. They outsource them. But yeah, not sure what the deal is there. They have the Allen key set screws which I believe came in around the JCM 800 era fair bit of dirt around the switch there it's the thing you go to the most when you're playing guitar it's a good um, habit to get into to just wash your hands and stuff before it particularly guitars themselves you should see some of the fretboards I get in my god you almost have to take a shovel to them so she's had a pretty rough life, but Marshalls love rough life, at least the 800s do, <laughs> and previous. Uh, the usual broken corners on the, the vent there. It's got this little def deformation, def de deformation. <laughs> uh, it looks like it melted. Not sure. It's not from the valves, because this would be melted, but yeah, don't know. But you've got this missing too, so something might have just come along and smashed that and it just looks like it's melted because it's permanently deformed it. But anyway, I'll ask if he wants a new end cap on that handle, but I think it'll, it'll look a bit out of place with new stuff on it, I think. <laughs> kind of looks cool how it is. Road Warrior. Now, over here there's another burn, so... Just a strange way of uh, burning stuff. I don't know what could have caused that, but... Anyway, it's not the end of the world. Like I say, let's not lose sleep over it. So first look at the back. It's got your usual patina on the uh, grill. Oddly, it's got three screws on each side. I've never seen that before. Usually it's only the four screws, so, and they look to be original. Um, I don't think you'd go throwing another screw in there just to be sure, because that's pretty heavy steel. It's like 1.6 mil steel or something. Yeah, just never seen three screws on either end there. No big deal. Uh, so the first thing I noticed on the back, missing speaker outlet. Not sure if maybe that was a modification that got reversed at some point or if it's floating around inside. <laughs> we'll crack it open and have a look. So just checking the fuse ratings and conditions Two amp mains. And it's intact. You always should test fuses because sometimes there's a break to the fuse wire within the end cap and it looks visually fine, but it's it's uh, it's fatigued to the point where it fails. These spring loaded ones, generally the, the spring will pull back if it if it fails, however. So this is HT fuse, one amp, fast blow. Just do the idiot check, yep. So that's good, no exploded fuses. It's always a good sign. 
It's a sign that you might be able to reuse the output valves too. I emphasize the word might be able to use the output valves again. Further testing required. So just a quick look at the bottom before we take the chassis screws out. Uh, all feet are present, all screws are present. One's been replaced and it's washer. And they're pretty reamed out. So like I say, get our mate the Stanley, get a Stanley, and use the proper tool for the job. So then you can avoid this kind of bullshit. Probably still get that one out, no worries, but I've had ones where the whole screw head's just like a cup. <laughs> you gotta get pliers on it to undo it. So we'll whack the back cover off, have a quick look inside, and then slide the chassis out and see what horrors await. Now on the previous video, uh, I, I asked if um, you guys and girls, or and girl, it's probably one or two, um, if you like the format of first video, two part series, first video, checking out the amp, a bit of banter, just easy going, workshop banter, and then the second one actually getting our hands dirty and getting down to it. Now, a couple of you said you prefer the first video. <laughs> I can't just stand here and talk shit all day. I'm, I've got to get some work done too. Um, and a couple said, much less said, uh, they prefer it all in one big long video. So, I'd say the two-part format wins out, democracy being what it is. And we'll keep doing that for a while. It may change. I do what I like around here. If I start not enjoying doing a certain video, I just change what I do. After all, it's not like it pays the bills, eh? <laughs> Alright, so first look in the back. It's promising. All the valves have vacuum and they're all present. <laughs> Which is more than we could say for the previous Marshall in here. Um, the spring retainer is all there. There's a fair bit of discoloration on mm, pretty evenly across them. That one's a bit lighter, so that one's probably had an easier life. So they're probably not that well matched. Uh, they're valve arts. EL34s from China. I seem to remember these ones being what they came out with. So there's a, there's a chance these are original. I'll look more into that. I'm talking out of, out of class here at the moment. Um, we'll slide the chassis out and we'll have a look at the preamp valves and just the general condition of the top, which is guaranteed to be filthy because it's a Marshall. And we were not disappointed with the filthiness. It seems to just be a common common thing with marshals that all the stuff goes through the vent and just collects on the chassis and just sits there and uh, starts eating away at the plating but you know it's not the worst I've seen we'll uh, give this a clean up and uh, I'll chuck the hazmat suit on nah just joking it's not that bad it's just dust uh, <laughs> interestingly someone's numbered the valves like <laughs> what for Anyway, um, so maybe they're not original because someone's probably been in here and changed them out before. The preamp valves look intact. Let's have a quick look. We have in V1, it, ooh, JJ. So that's a replacement at some point. Pretty long time ago though because the pins are pretty, pretty tarnished and it looks like the old style riding. The logos are a little bit sort of fatter, fatter riding these days. I don't have one within arm's reach to show you, but anyway, take a word for it. V2 is a 12AX7 electro harmonics, so that's a replacement as well. Because it is dated. Oh, I always forget the date codes. Is that 2012 or is that 2000? I don't know. Yeah, a bit of crap floating around in that socket. That's the the same, probably the same batch as the V2 for V3. So we'll see how they go, because uh, 
Some Russian vowels don't like being cathode followers. So we'll see if that's behaving. Now yeah, well that cap's nice and loose. Oh, come straight out. <laughs> that's not ideal, to say the least. You got a cap there with high voltage on it, floating around, touching the uh, the ability to touch its bracket. What are the others like? They're pretty firm. Got a feeling someone's undone that in the past, and yeah, look, the screw's just loose. So, as I say, someone's played knifey spoony before. So we'll look at that area with uh, a little bit more intense attention to detail. But let's whack these valves out, have a look at the sockets, and then flip her over and look at the guts. Here you can see there's a bit of metalization happening on the glass around the vent in the, the plate there. So that means, uh, well, it doesn't mean it's buggered. It just means that they've had a pretty long life or they've been driven pretty hard. Because that's actually deposition of material on the glass that's been carried out. You can see it on that one as well, just behind the writing there. But they're all intact. All the center key way things are not broken off, which is nice. So, you know, we'll see how they perform. And if they need to be replaced, we'll replace them. So looking at the sockets here, it doesn't appear, appear to be any arc damage or anything. So let's say the sockets are uh, decent condition. So let's flip her over and have a look. Have a look, see. All right, so not too bad. That's the overall picture there. Looks mostly stock. Mostly. Um, yeah, there's speaker jack loose. Zoom in on that. So speaker jack is pretty loose and the other one's missing and Looks like there's some aftermarket wiring here. Whoever wired this stuff put a little bit of heat shrink on the end of every wire, so that's a bit of a giveaway of where the uh, where work's happened. Uh, so someone's replaced the impedance selector as well, and you can see that it's got new new looking screws and nylock nuts there. So they've done a pretty good job. So we'll double check all that's right. You can see the rear plate on the replacement is fatter than the uh main selector switch so yeah that's an aftermarket item I think it's the same as the one I showed in the 2203 yesterday or whatever day you're watching this right, so I just had a look at the schematic so this this 1992 circuit the uh, the grid uh, connects directly to the PI coupler <coughs> coupling caps on the inner two valves so no grid stopper on the inner two valves and there's only grid stoppers on the outer two valves uh, we'll see how that performs I, that looks stock that looks like the original uh, resistor there um, it can lead to instability at high frequency having no grid stopper uh, however I'm not sure the effect um, that having the outer two with grid stoppers 1.5 K's they've got um, what effect that would have to have the inner two without them so i think we'll see how the thing performs we'll leave it as is for the moment um we'll see how it performs uh in terms of high frequency stability and if there's any issues uh we, we might revisit that later on so when i open this thing up i noticed uh each cap has a bulge in the center those two 
are just bulging and these two have actually broken through and this one's the worst so these capacitors have a like a pressure relief valve in the bottom um, some smaller radial caps will have them in the top as a series of uh, like scores in the top so the cap can open up if it if it fails instead of exploding sometimes they like to explode anyway but um, the larger ones have a pre pressure release valve in the bottom covered by that bottom uh, piece of what looks to be like a fiber board um, and that's actually broken through so you can see the electrolyte there starting to leak and dry out so these caps are uh, definitely due for changing so it's strange I haven't seen these caps before there's no brand on them no date code or anything it's just 50 50 500 volt DC bracket 2 bracket 2 what no other markings so we don't know what year they are but um, looking at the date here 11th to the 10th 83 so she's an 83 model so essentially the majority of work in this will be just doing the recap um, and just going over all the connections as usual just checking everything up close and personal uh, all the pots appear to be original so we'll check their condition and see how it performs once we fire it up see how the valves are operating um, if they require new ones we'll change them out and then reassess but the vast majority of work and it's just doing the recap and um, and just checking over everything so let's get it happening so I'll try the two video format again so I'll leave it here, champions, and see you on the next one where we actually get our hands dirty. So, see you then.